our very own leader of the New Democratic Party, our candidate for the 2024 general election, the humble, respected man with integrity, man who has initiated so much for Ghana, who wants to move Ghana to the next level. Our very own Al Haji, Dr. Mahamadou Paul. At this juncture, we will not waste the time. We will call the chairman of the campaign to give us his opening remarks so we can start. Dan Lokoji. Your prayers and 
that even though he has a good heart and the world to serve him, he needs your prayers continuously. Continuously. He's complete of it. Are we here to the certain act that men and women of God should go and campaign for us and talk to their flock to go for anything they have to do? No. But we are here to present our message to you and ask for your support and prayers as we go up and down and even as we forget our officials and our policies. We get the guidance of God. And He has directed us. This meeting is something that we do for prayer. It's like the will of God. He grants the program and favor to the it's something that will continue very well. This international teaching and the creation. We are not just doing it because we are not going to do it for you. No. Because I've said it, I've learned it from our uh, Bible expositors, that this whole thing about democracy, representative government, meeting people and grouping them so that people represent them, so that they can hear them case and their submissions and solve their problems. The foundation is in scripture. In Exodus 18, when they showed the father-in-law of Moses, this and you saw how Moses was meeting all the people, sitting for more than evening, Jethro said, no, my son, you know, what you are doing is not good. You will break down. He says, 24, find Abraham, every man, capable man, men who fear God, men who hate perfectionism, and put them in charge of the people. And when they stop to happen, then they will come to you. Many of them. When we are local assemblies, when we are basic assemblies, we are regional, we are parallel, two such a state, two such a state, that is the state of And we are convicted that we have a foundation in it. And when it comes to the lesson, as we do, God will be able to do that. When you do that, you do God will have written as as you know for the war for the book of replace it for this person and it will have happened. But no, it asks one to one, what are you doing? That we next to cast off, to ballot, to vote. Just to let one person to find the level to come for. So to take my fire and pastor has also called you see. Don't Even though, to the best of my knowledge, the Bible didn't give the results of the election. It was an election. And for me, the important thing is that before they voted, they prayed. Ask them to pray to them. Oh God, who knows the innermost hearts of men? We present these two people before you. Help us to choose one who is able, who will fear you more, and you are able to pray before them. So, in scripture, with the basis of governance, in scripture, we test it. But the most important thing is that we pray. And that's how prayer we also ask you that if you do our righteousness for God Almighty on earth, Help us to pray that the God who knows the inner part of them will select the right person to fear for. But we are compared and convicted and responsible to justice. But in pray, we pray for the Lord. When we believe that we will fix it to that description, we will fix it to the commandment that we saw that we will fear for the Lord. That's how we can be a decision. And we do so knowing many brethren. You know it. 
in the society, in our society, so many things are there. Negative propaganda, negative messages. Even when the law and the apostles were preaching, others too were also confusing the people. But we are here to believe that you can be said and spiritually do so and advise the flock so that they don't get confused and they are not influenced by negative propaganda. But we are looking for people who God can use. And we are convicted that God said, any human being, any person who fears God and makes himself afraid of God, our God will use that person. God can do living living things or no living things. At the point he said that if you do not praise him, stones, stones, that are no living things. For that kind of praise, that is the God we serve. And you taught us, you taught us in Numbers 22 that when Allah was sitting on the earth. And the angel of the Lord appeared. The man, the human being, could not see the angel of the Lord. It's like us. The donkey who saw the angel of the Lord. To the extent that God has spoke to the animal, spoke to the donkey, to the human being. This is the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
available for both of us. So when we say we are committed and all those the inner most of the people, we cannot come forward and say we are We cannot. We believe in it. that it 
that purpose makes sense that I'm standing before you today. Initially, I was never thinking I was going to college. It was never my desire growing up. I wanted to be an economist or as a bank of Ghana. But God did it. We did it in four hours. August 2018, I had that decision to make to enter college. 24 hours, my life was changed. And then I entered politics, and last year I decided to run for the presidential candidate of my party, the new patriotic party. All of you know that in our party, there was almost a party that had been established that many people thought that we were only going to have select a leaders to lead us. Isn't that it? That was a party that many people thought had been established that our leadership would always be a kind. So when you had this man from Wale Wale, yeah, that I say, I'm also I'm going to leave the party. There were many people who said it was not. They didn't see how everybody would elect somebody from the north to have a leader. And not only with somebody from the north, I also am a person. So you will say that that's something that I'm also never happened. You are saying that this person from the law is also a person after you be elected to be this entity. I said, if it is the will of God, it can happen. It is possible. It is possible. We went for an election in the past, and no one I was the only person from the law against that people. Only this. But God said it is possible, maybe it was possible, and I was elected with the highest votes ever for a first time in the world. So I believe that it was not by my might or by my power, but by the grace of God that I was elected as the family for the people. I believe that as we are told in the Bible, God has used Jacob, a good friend of mine, who is uh, one of my best friends from primary school, who is in peace right now in the children. He used to tease and he would say, Can anything good come out of one another? Can anything good come out of one another? I said yes, good thing. Something good can come out of the world if it is the will of God. And I believe that, as I said, God uses and who is able to change the society. We see the story of Cyrus. Cyrus is a Bible. Cyrus did not even believe in God. He did not know. But still, God knew Cyrus to tell the people. And so that is why I believe that God can use me also to help change that. We are a blessed country. Let us appreciate the country that we are. Ghana is a very blessed country. We are the most peaceful country in the whole of this and one of the most peaceful countries in the world of Africa. This is our DNA as Ghanaians. We are now known for peace. But the peace that we have in Ghana is underpinned by our religious tolerance. There is so much religious tolerance in Ghana compared to many of the countries on the continent. And especially in our neighboring countries. It's a remarkable amount of 
religious tolerance. We are not a country in this country that I know of where a chief imam celebrates his 100th birthday by going to the Catholic Church and doing it. That is very unusual. That is very unusual. We sent him and visited the practice and had four years with his holiness, the Pope, Pope Francis. And when we had our conversation, one of the things he mentioned, and he's so knowledgeable, so, so knowledgeable, he says, the thing I like about Pan is your religious tolerance. And you will go to maintain that religious tolerance. And I said to him, please pray for us so that that religious tolerance continues to be maintained. <laughs> By way of background, I come from a large family. My father married my mother. At the time, actually, my father married, was going to marry my mother. My mother was a Christian. She was a heavy voice She was a Christian. She had to convert to Islam to marry my father. My father had 17 surviving children. 17 of us. He had a football team and a tennis. What is interesting about our family is that of the 17 of us, 9 of us are Christians. Eight of us are Muslims. Seventy. Nine is the same family. So growing up, we had both the Bible and the Quran in the house. And my relationship with the church has been from childhood. It is not now. When I was a child, I was a member of the Methodist Church. I was a baby. grew up in the Methodist Church. Today, I am a vice but I am a coach of the Methodist Church in the day of time. I'm a baby. Today, I work closely with a Catholic priest called Father Canada, who we went with letters and then took a picture of letters in the community of that and we went together and he has also been sending me a picture of the letter that he says so rich to look at the speech of the in the and so all of this to let you know where my heart is my heart is about helping people, helping the poor, helping the poor. That is where my heart is. To be, I believe, we must care. We must care about people. Last year, I went to Akoko. We were celebrating the 100 years anniversary of the Akoko presidency. When we went there, I was so touched. I was with my campaign chairman, Dabuti. I was so touched with the history of the present church in the region, in Ghana, celebrating 100 years of the history. And I said, I'm going to do something to commemorate the contribution of the church. And I offered to build a school in Kwakwata in the East Village. In honor of the church's hundred and I have built the school, and we have the school in honor of the church. So as I am saying, my whole worldview uh, and my relationship with the church has been from childhood. It is not because I entered politics that I have entered closer to the church. Be very close to the 
This is 
is something that was not possible before, but now we have to do it possible. Without those, when I look at her, I realize that addresses, finding addresses was a problem. You have to look for the white cellar or the pink cellar, ten right, the blue house, ten left. Those were not, you know, directions. But now, Ghana has implemented a digital address So now you cannot get lost. Everywhere you want to go, you can find it. Businesses have been found. Villages, everywhere, you can find them in places. And so, we are the second country in the whole world, the whole world, Ghana is the second country to implement a digital address. The whole world. Then I address the issue of lack of financial inclusion. Most of our population do not have access to financial services. And maybe even when you had a home, you could only transfer money between one network. You couldn't transfer between MTN and Vodafone or MTN and MT. And you couldn't transfer money between your own account and your bank account. So I came up with the idea that we should do global money into operability. So we will have a lot of probability amongst all these. It was not easy, but we have done global money into our probability. And therefore, that we can remit money between your different territories, and you can do money between a bank account and a mobile account. And that is the first country in the whole of Africa to achieve global money into our probability. In terms of access to financial inclusion, we are the number one in the world. Because today, if you have a mobile account, it works like a bank account. But most people don't even really bother with their bank accounts anymore. But we don't know money to do more. Someone sends you money from abroad, it now comes to your mobile account. You don't need to go to Western Union to queue anything. You can use your mobile to pay anything. So we have, we have done. Now, we have done that, we have made sure one of the problems that we had, we had was post workers in our public sector. There was a lot of corruption, post workers in people who were being paid for not even going to work. Their names were on the payroll. So, what did I say? I said, let us make every public sector worker with their Ghana card. Because the Ghana card holders have to be by rhetoric fingerprints on them. So every person can be uniquely identified. Because those don't have fingerprints. Those don't have fingerprints. Immediately we decided to link them, the ghost ran away. The ghost ran away. In the National Service Secretary, we found 44,000 ghost workers. 44,000, we eliminated 44,000. Saving 450 million Ghana citizens in the In the SNCC pension database, we found 29,000 ghost pensions. We removed them, saving about 350 million Ghana citizens. Just two institutions. But 750 million savings. Then we clean the controller and account of the other So now we are confidently say, because of the use of the Ghana card, we don't have those workers of government people anymore. That problem has been solved. That problem has been solved. We have digitalized passports, the ports, we have digitalized DDLA. Hospital because there was no blood. 
go to give you a sign to to Ghana. There is no foreign agent that is required. Let us get the sign. Let us let us bring down your university and let us see. So it's a very important thing that I want us to do. Uh, in addition to that, if we look at transport fares, I'm uh, advocating that the public transport should move to the electric vehicle. That the transport transport should move to the electric vehicle so that we can reduce the cost of public transportation. It's a very, very important thing for us to do. Reduce the cost of public transportation because if you look at the cost of public transport, which I have been looking at for a very long time, it is two factors, fuel prices and spend tax. If you go to electric, electric vehicles, fuel prices are not there. You are using factories of the electric. Spend tax are extremely minimal. So the cost of fuel dramatically declined. So we are bringing in this year, by the grace of God, we are waiting to bring in about 200 buses this year, electric vehicles, to do a proof of concept. So that everybody will see how the electric buses can bring down the cost and then we will take it from there. That, that if, we, if we don't bring down the cost of transport, so many people of, of our population rely on public transport. Most of our population, maybe 80, 90 percent, rely on public transport. So bringing down the public transport cost will bring down the cost of electric. The other factor that I want us to change dramatically in regard is our tax system. Our tax system is a major problem for us. It's a system we inherited at independence. And it's a system which is extremely cumbersome and subject to a lot of abuse. A lot of the time, businesses receive tax bills from GIA and they don't understand it. They don't understand how those tax bills were generated. Sometimes if they are not lucky, they are short to keep those because they haven't paid the tax over there. And so, I have been struggling with this matter for the last two years, studying how Ghana can move into a tax system that is simple, that is easily understood, that is easily enforceable. I know that all countries, and I found out that in the whole world, there is one country that has kept coming number one in the last three years in the area of tax competitiveness. And that is Estonia. Estonia is number one in the world from 10 years ago in the area of tax so I took a team, GIA and others, and we went to the school. We went to study their system. They have a very simple system. It's a flat tax system. It's like the way we pay our tithes in church. If it's 10 percent, it's 10 percent. If it's 20 percent, it's 20 percent. You give the appropriate conditions to protect the poor. But it is therefore very simple. That is the nature of the tax system. Uh, very simple to administer, and so you can tell who has paid who has been paid. Because now, one of the things that we do, we have made the Ghana card in tax identification number. So that everybody who has the Ghana card has a tax identification number. At the time that we go to the office, only 4% of the other people in Ghana had a tax identification number. 4%. How can you enforce tax? Rules is only 4% of the people. But once we make the Ghana card, the tax identification number, we are moving from 4% to 85% of adults now have a tax identification number. In Ghana, from 4% to 85%. So the database exists, and we are going to be able to tell who has far, who has not far. So I want us next year, by the grace of God, next year, to move to a flat tax for businesses and individuals. And so that we are all able to start from a clean state and fresh state for all families, individuals and businesses, we will start a fresh for 2025. I will issue a tax amnesty for 
I believe also that you know education is going to be very key for the future. Education is key for the future. We are entering the fourth industrial revolution and our children need to be very skilled in the digital age. That is really not negotiable. You know, if they are not digitally literate, they will stay behind. They will stay behind. That is where the world is going. And this is why, you know, we have done the three SHS is very good. Uh, and, and we have seen a 75% increase in enrollment. And we have also seen gender parity. Now there are more girls and boys in senior high school. In KB17, for every 100 boys, there were 68 years. For every 100 boys, 68 years. Today, for every 100 boys, there are 106 years. So we tell them that the girls are now from the high school, who are taking the boys in the senior high school. And we have given them laptops, and they are being distributed now in senior high school. But we need to train our young people in digital skills. The good thing about the digital area is that you don't really need a university degree or a polytechnic degree to be trained to have the skills in that area. All you really need is to be able to read and write. We can train everybody, even school dropouts. We can train them to be digitally related, to be coded. Even in higher age, we are taking some higher age to learn and code. I believe 
that if you give me the opportunity, I will be more accountable. Why will I be more accountable? Because I will come back after four years and ask you for another opportunity. And then you will ask me, but you said you will do this. So that means I am going to wait for the time to make sure I accomplish my vision. Because I will have to account for what I have done after four years. I believe that if you give me that opportunity, I'm going to, by the grace of God, make a lot of things possible. Thank God. And I'm asking for your support and your prayers and your blessing. Thank you very much.